It is good to see everybody out here this Sunday morning for service. Hopefully, you all are staying nice and uh, warm. It's nice and warm in here, which is nice. If you walked outside any bit, it hurt. Maybe it didn't hurt for you guys, but it hurt for most people to walk outside, except Silas. <laughs> Silas, where is he? He was walking in like a champ today. So, go ahead. Yeah, hanging out outside there. Go ahead and stand if you will. Grab your hymnals. We'll turn it over to song number 516 as we begin. Song number 516. We'll sing there. We're marching to Zion. 516. Come ye that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne. And thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion. The beautiful city of God. Let those read.
every dying of distress and unbelief in sin. Get ready now to vacate for you see. Well, there's some exciting truth right there. I want to read that last verse. Let every giant of distress and unbelief and sin get ready to vacate for you see. I've come from out the wilderness. I know I'm going to win. Why do we know that? Because God said so. Amen. In Christ, we have his victory. I mean, he's not up there going, oh no, whatever will I do? I sure hope Howerton comes along to save the day. No, the one that's going to save the day has already saved the day, and he saved my soul forevermore, amen? And, and I have the victory, and his name is Jesus, amen? And you have the victory if you're saved this morning. His name is Jesus, amen? And what a great truth on a bitter cold morning, amen? That Look, if if I freeze to death on the way home, I'm going to heaven. Amen. And I don't have any Bible proof for this, but I feel pretty certain that heaven is about 67 degrees with a light breeze. <laughs> Can't prove it, and you can argue with me all you want, and when we get to heaven, we won't care. Amen? Because it'll be perfect, and, you know, that's about perfect for me. <clears throat> so, But that's my carnal flesh. I won't have that when I get to heaven, amen? <laughs> so maybe this is perfect. I don't know. <laughs> what is it now, about two, something like that outside? But uh, it's supposed to warm up. Uh, should be about four today. That'd be a blessing, amen? It was zero when I came to church this morning. That was a blessing. It was negative one when I started the car. And then I got here and sat here getting doing Bible stuff and stuff this morning, and it warmed up to negative two. Like, you know, Lord, I don't want to be petty, but we're going the wrong direction. <laughs> we're going to have a good day in the Lord's house today. We are having um, lunch right after and, and some stuff, and then we're going to have afternoon service, and then we'll be done for the day, and we'll get to go home or go play volleyball or whatever you want to do. I saw some guys, now this is, I'm not kidding i can't remember the exact day but it was within the last week or so when it was you know eight degrees outside or 12 whatever and i know for a fact i just know this someone got a mobile pickleball net and some rackets and a pickleball ball if that's what you call it if that's not what you call it that's fine that's what i call it because they were in the parking lot of the school bundled up like it was funny, they probably, if they rest their arms, it'd have been like this because they had such heavy coats on and everything else playing pickleball. I'm just thinking, you know, thanks, mom, for the pickleball stuff. We'll get it out in springtime. I'm just, <clears throat> that was pretty weird out them out there freezing cold, but hey, do what you need to do, amen. That's a good, to, good day to be in the Lord's house. And I know I'm going to win. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love for us. And Lord, I do pray for every person that's here, every family represented, everyone that can hear us online even. I pray that, God, you'd bless. I pray that, God, you'd give good health, wisdom, grace. I pray for your protection uh, during this cold weather. And Lord, I do beg you to help us, Lord, to, to, to get to a point in our lives. And I pray for some it be today that you can get a hold of our hearts. Maybe there's some that need to be saved today. Lord, I pray that you'd start stirring their hearts and their minds and their understanding that uh, by your shed blood we have eternal life. We have the victory that we just sang about. And God, I'm begging you to work in our midst today that, Lord, you'd help us, uh, Lord, just to come closer to you and, Lord, to let you work in our lives. We love you and we just ask you to bless in a mighty way today. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. <clears throat>
ever 
for every time that I have failed. Each time I've stumbled and sins prevailed, you pick me up and set my feet on higher ground. Why you should love me, I don't know. ever happened to me and I hold it all to you Lord all I have is yours Lord take my life make me what you'd have me be I'm your child and you're my father I'm the clay and you're the potter Lord you're the best thing ever happened to me. I'm your child and you're my father. I'm the clay and you're the potter. Lord, you best thing that's ever happened to me. again if you will here and I asked I don't know if I, I don't know if Miss Cindy got the picture okay so you want to know just how cool I don't know I wasn't going to even fake subscribe to Peacock last night to watch the game so I did not but I don't know if anybody saw that photo the video of the water bottle did anybody see that picture of the water bottle last, yesterday Look it up here. They take the water bottle out of the freezer, and as it's coming out of the freezer, it's freezing within seconds there. That's how cold it was. This is how cold it was yesterday in Wichita. <laughs> Literally. That's here in Wichita. If you want some ramen noodles for lunch today, it maybe has thawed since then. And so if you want to know how cold it is, there you go. Song number 40. Song number 40. Let's sing there, Are You Washed in the Blood? Song number 40. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace?
you stay standing if you would. Well, praise the Lord. While you turn in your Bibles to uh, 1 John chapter 4, note the song is a scriptural song. It's biblical and it's uh, doctrinally sound. Um, so I said all that to say this. <clears throat> it's not about how well you've cleaned yourself up. God doesn't, God doesn't look at how well you've cleaned yourself up in order to come to him so that he can clean you up because you can't clean yourself up enough to come to Jesus, amen? You just got to come to him, and he'll clean you up by the washing of the water, by the word, by his blood, hallelujah. That's where it's all made different. That's where you're made whole, not in your own efforts. Now, after salvation, that's when the Bible says that we get to start doing our part. Before salvation, there ain't nothing we can do. You can't, you can't make it better. You can't make it easier. You can't, you can't go, you know, well, I can't come to Jesus yet because i got to go you know, spend two years going through this 12-step program. No, no, just come to Jesus, and he'll help you with everything else along the way. Amen. Amen. Now maybe you found First John, and you found chapter 4. It happens to be right after chapter 3. Hallelujah. First John chapter 4. Beginning in verse number 7, the Bible says, Beloved, let us love one another. Man, I love coming to church. Uh, we don't have to preach against sin. We don't have to preach against the wickedness of the world. We can just preach about the love. Amen? Well, that's what we're preaching about today. Oh, now you say amen. After I tell you... Okay, all right, fine. You want to do it that way? Let's do it that way. Sin is bad, and we're again it. Amen. Now we'll move on. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this, love, God is love, the love of God. In this, was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Herein is love, not that we loved God. That should be expected of all humans <laughs> because of His goodness to us. Amen. We all should love God. That's not the defining power of love. The defining power of love is that God loved us. Amen. I mean, goodness, I know myself, and, and that's, a, that, that's a big thing right there. Hearing is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also, we ought also to love God. Well, that's the easy part. <laughs> Love one another. <clears throat> no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. Period, right there. So all the stuff leading up to that, what well, happens to all just be about love, and so when it says, hereby know we that, he, that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us his spirit, that's talking about the love. God's love for us, our love for him, our love for the brethren, our love for everyone. We've seen, do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath, hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar. Preacher, I think you shouldn't be so hard. I think you should be softer in the way you speak. I'm, 
If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. In other words, we should love everyone. Well, there's that one guy or there's that one lady. I don't know. We should love everyone. God loves everyone. And the more like God we want to be, the more like God we're going to have to love everyone. And the big test is loving the ones that are less lovable. And often that's me. <laughs> by this we know that the love of... By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. <clears throat> For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. And these three are one, and there, there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your word. I do pray, God, that you'd help us this morning to hear, Lord, from you. God, it's just bitter cold outside, and... and uh, <clears throat> I pray that it'd be worth folks' effort to get up and to get in their cold, cold cars and to drive out here this morning. So, Lord, help me not to waste their time, not to waste their effort, not to waste all that, not to waste your time. And, God, that you would speak to us this morning in a mighty way. Help us. God, maybe there's some that need salvation this morning. Lord, would you speak to them? Maybe there's some that just need some victory this morning. Maybe there's some that need encouragement this morning. Maybe there's some that need some help, some wisdom, some grace, whatever it is. God, I, I thank you that your Holy Spirit can meet all the needs, and I pray, Lord, for me and for every individual that's in this place that we would allow you to do that today for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated this morning. So, we have this whole passage here, and, and really we, we could have read the whole First John uh, because it all it, it's just a letter. You know, it's not broken up into verses or chapters. That's not how John wrote it. He wrote it as a letter uh, to to some folks to be read and read aloud to an assembly of people, then to be read and passed around and all that stuff. And, and so when we look at what he says here in chapters four and five, he's talking very powerfully about the love of God and the love of God's people, that'd be those that are saved, us loving God, and the way that we love God is to love others. Now, we can try to love others without loving God, and we can try to love others without receiving the love of God, and it's just not going to work. It's going to be you know, a fleeting carnal love. It's going to be, you know, as long as you're nice to me, then I'll be nice to you. As long as you treat me good, I'll treat you good. As long as you give me a gift, I'll give you a gift. And that's how we define love in this, in this world today. And, you know, we talk a lot about, um, people say the law of first mention, and I have repeatedly said for 22 years, yeah, be careful with that because it's not really a law. It is a principle. And the funny thing about love is the very first mention of the word love in the Bible has to do with food. <laughs> Back in, in Genesis, when, uh, um, when Jacob and Esau are, are fighting over Dad's favor, and they go make the chili that, that thou lovest, that thou love, love, the word love. And, and so it is a good principle, but you just got to be careful there, because 
you know, the real love isn't about food. But I'm thankful God didn't have to give us taste buds, right? He didn't have to do that. But I'm glad he did. And he gave us all taste buds, and for some reason, people still like Brussels sprouts. That is so weird. (laughs) Anyways, back to Scripture. In, In this hymnal... Red hymnal song 220, if you want to turn there, keep your Bible open. We're not, we're not changing texts, amen. <laughs> but I think this is very powerful. Not just the story behind it, but the words. Song number 220 in your red hymnal. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. Think about that. I, I, you know, maybe, maybe you go back to when you were a teenager, not the present day teenagers, because they don't have a clue what this means, but back when you were a teenager, you know, you'd write love letters to someone. I, uh, my, my children found some letters that I wrote my wife when I was deployed, and I don't remember which one, it might have been Lydia, it could have been Eileen or Genevieve or Kimber, I'm not sure which one, but what they said was, they were disgusting, it was all about, oh, I miss you, and I love you, and oh, I just want to hug you, and oh, I miss you, love, love, love. Like, that was disgusting. Did you read them all? No. We read half the first one, and that was enough. You're just trying to express your love, right? I mean, uh, back if you were in my era, uh, some of you might have had the, the, just the joy, the pleasure of making a mixtape for someone you like. Some of you have no idea what I just said, and that's okay. <laughs> but writing that love letter, or, you know, in a diary, trying to describe the person that you love. And, and I understand, biblically, we can't even know what love is without Jesus. But we have those very, very strong feelings, and that's, it's translated, we, we use the word love, and that's fine. Uh, the word that's used love here, we'll look at in a minute, is, is agape, or agape o, depending on, on the context of the usage, but it's still just a selfless, serving, giving love. I love you whether or not you love me. And that's how our God loves us. He loves us so much he gave his only begotten son, knowing that Jesus would be beaten to a pulp, knowing that he would have thorns smashed into the skull of his only begotten son, knowing that the flesh on his back would be ripped off by that cat of nine tails, knowing he'd be nailed on a cross. He loved us. And he loved those people that nailed his son to the cross knowing they would not love him back, that's love. And we can't know real love until we know God. But we still have those feelings. And so when the the writer here, Mr. Lehman, says the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. There is no letter you could ever write. There's no book you could ever write. There is no book that man has ever written that can explain the love of God. All the books that have ever been written about our great God could never explain the love of God. You know what can explain the love of God? The Holy Ghost that lives inside of you. And you'll know it in a different way than I know it. And I'll know it in a different way than you know it. And you'll know it today different than how you knew it yesterday. Because what you need today is different than yesterday. And God is always there to meet those needs. And it starts with His love pouring out to you. His powerful, powerful love. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star. Now imagine this was written in 1917. They had no idea where stars were in 1917. Let's be honest, we still don't know today. We can make stuff up and say the universe is this big. We have no clue. Let's just just be honest, we have no clue. But it keeps getting bigger. Our abilities to see keeps getting bigger, presumably, goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hill. I've read stories, and it's always, it always seems to be in Russia, right? A couple times I think it's been in some Eastern Bloc country, but 
it's always there where they find a hole that goes down to hell and they hear people screaming, right? Have you, you, you read those stories? Okay, one of you shook your head, yes, thank you for saying that. I'm not, don't go looking for them. They're, they're just weird and hokey, right? But uh, it, 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 when you read the Bible, you see the anguish and you see the pain and God's not willing that any should perish. Hell is not an alternate location. You're not going to go there and party with your friends. You're going to go there and be in torment forever and ever more. But God's love is such that he, he made provision for every soul that's ever been born to know heaven as home, to know salvation, to know Jesus, and to know the love of God. That's what God has done. Every soul is his desire for every soul to know that. Reaches to the lowest hell, the guilty pair bowed down with care, and you can go back to Adam and Eve, and you can go all the way through since then. You and your spouse, or you and your friend, you and whoever, the guilty pair, that's every human. We all stand guilty before God. Our redemption is in the blood of Jesus, not in our awesomeness or whatever. God gave his son to win his erring child. He reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure. The saints and angels song. When hoary time shall pass away, it means you're getting old and the color of your hair changes. Amen? It's like I'm losing everyone here. Why is preacher preaching out of the hymnal? Because it's a good song. Would you rather me sing it? This is my mean face. This is one that scares my children. Right? (laughs) When hoary times shall pass away and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall, when men who here refuse to pray on rocks and hills and mountains call, God's love so sure shall still endure. In other words, these people, they're not worshiping God. They're worshiping statues. They're worshiping the sun. They're worshiping the moon. They're worshiping creation. God still loves them. He loves the wickedest of the wicked, and he loves the most self-righteous of the self-righteous. All measureless and strong, redeeming grace to Adam's race, the saints and angels' song, O oh, love of God, it goes again into the chorus. Could we, with ink, the ocean fill? I have a... That was empty. It's almost empty. It's very close to empty. <clears throat> I have a fountain pen that I write with. I have a purpose for writing with the fountain pen. There's there's a whole theology built behind it. It has nothing to do with Bible stuff, but a whole theology built behind with why I have a fountain pen. <clears throat> this one's almost empty, so I have to go back home to my ink well and draw more ink into this thing to fill it back up. And that is essentially what this is referring to. If we fill the whole oceans with ink and get our fountain pens out, and fill it up and write the... 40 or 50 pages and fill it up again and write the 40 and 50 pages and fill it up again and write the 40 or 50 pages. That should be enough, you think? <clears throat> should probably be enough. Could we would think the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made, the endless skies, if we were to write in size 8 font all across the skies, where every stalk on earth a quill, so every person grabs a quill and starts writing, all seven billion of us, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the oceans dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure, the saints and angels' song. Look, that, that hymn is Bible truth today. That hymn is right. We can never communicate the fullness of the love of God, but the love of God can communicate to you. It can communicate hope. 
It can communicate victory. It can communicate comfort. It can communicate salvation. It can communicate, look, I know the the home I have here is temporary. The home I have here uh, will wither away. The home I have here falls apart. Uh, the, The pipes may burst because of this freezing. But in glory, there's nothing broken. In glory, there's nothing but holy. In glory, there's nothing but the love of God that can't be measured, can't be outdone should not be neglected it should be received and forevermore it should change us the power of the love of God in the hearts of those that come to him is the greatest thing that man can ever know Jesus' first use of the word love is in Matthew 5 if you look over there keep your place in John but look at Matthew 5 Matthew chapter number 5 It's the Sermon on the Mount. This is where Jesus first began to teach, his first teaching. He came down, he spent uh, 30 days and 30 nights in the wilderness, and he met with Satan, and Satan tempted him and told him all of these things, and we have a record of a few of them there, and and tempted him with this and tempted him with that, with hunger and with power and, and with riches and all these things. And every single time Satan tempted him, he met Satan, with the word of God, he quoted back scripture to him. Satan twisted that scripture just like he did in the Garden of Eden. And he tried to do it with with Christ our Savior, but it did not work. And he came back down from in the wilderness, came back down from that mount, having, having tussled with Satan, having won that battle. And he sits down and begins to teach. And we look into these pages in Matthew chapter 5. And what we see in verse 43, if you go there... We'll just look at two verses this morning because we're almost out of time and we haven't even made it to the introduction yet. Verse 43. Ye have heard. This is Jesus talking to these these Jews. I'm not going to say that we've heard this, but ye have heard that it it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Okay, that was a teaching that the, the... Pharisees would teach or the scribes would teach. Obviously, that wasn't what God taught in the Old Testament. God never taught us to hate our enemies, never said anything like that. Uh, but God gave us ten commandments. Well, he gave us one commandment, and we, we couldn't keep that one. So then he gave us ten commandments, and we couldn't keep those. So the Pharisees gave us 613 statutes, and we couldn't keep those either because we can't keep the righteousness of God. Only the blood of Jesus can atone for that. And so here we, we see this in verse 30, 40. Um, you've heard that it hath been said thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy but I, well I'm telling you when Jesus says something we ought to turn our ears and our hearts and our minds and our lives toward that we ought to say look Jesus is talking, he's saying something to me and bless God I get to hear what Jesus is saying I say unto you love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, Jesus says look if you are saved by the blood of Jesus I expect more out of you than the rest of these folks who claim to be self-righteous who claim to be holy because if I don't make you holy you ain't holy it's pretty much Bible so the only holiness we can know is through the blood of Jesus and if God loves for God so loved the world if God loves every human that's on the planet right now we should have some sort of love for them too well yeah but I I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna love them, them dirty. Uh, I ain't gonna love them, them socialists. I ain't gonna love them, Miami Dolphin fans. I ain't gonna love them. Uh, you know, we were taught in school. We, I'm not gonna love them Russians. I'm not gonna love them people. Well, God does. God does. Now, love doesn't come without wisdom. That this kind of love, love doesn't come without knowledge. Love doesn't come. I mean, you don't justify people who are living in sin. Does that make sense? That's not love. You don't, you don't equip people who are living in sin to continue in sin. You love them toward righteousness. And that's hard. It's easy to appeal to a drug addict. You just get them more drugs. And they'll think you love them because you're getting them more drugs. Or money, whatever. Usually that's the way it works, money. Well, I mean, I don't buy heroin. I don't buy heroin. No, but you give them $42,000 to a heroin addict. That's basically the same thing. You love them toward righteousness because Christ will change their life. 
So Jesus' first use of the word love is to love outside your comfort zone. Love outside what's easy. It's easy to love someone who, who is good to you. It's easy, it's easy to love someone who's nice. It's easy. You know, I mean, think of your, you know, what, what you might say, your dearest friend, your closest friend, your best friend in the world. Think of that person, and, and what, is, what is tied up in that is a lot of similarities in likes and ideologies and, and all these things. So you, you all, you, it's someone who enjoys some of the same things you enjoy. <clears throat> You like to fish. You find someone to be your fishing partner. They also like the same politics that you do. They also like the same team that you do. Uh, they also like the same food that you do. You hang out together. You talk about life together. All this stuff. That's easy. It's easy to love that person. It's harder to love someone who disagrees with you in everything. And so rather than loving them, as Scripture says, we just attack them and we say they're stupid. That's super easy. Anybody can do that. We attack their character. Well, here's the thing. People are either saved or not saved. And, and if you can understand this within the confines of salvation, character really doesn't matter. You can, have the most, you can be the most honest person on planet Earth and still bust hell wide open without the blood of Jesus. Once you get into salvation, now character matters. But before salvation, their character doesn't matter. So you attacking their character isn't helping them at all. Nor is it helping you, nor is it shining a good light on Jesus. What they need is to know the love of God because that's what changes them. Is it important that they understand some certain things? Maybe, but probably not until after salvation. I mean, we live in a culture where everyone lives together, no one's married. Well, you know, before they get saved, we've got to talk to them about their shacking up. No. <laughs> what on earth good is when they stop shacking up? They're still lost. If they die in a car wreck, they're still going to hell. How about share the gospel with them, try to love them to Jesus, and then watch Jesus change their life? I mean, that's where the biggest change takes place is because of Jesus. He changed my life. He picked me up out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and I jumped off. And he set my feet upon a rock and I jumped off. And I set my feet upon a rock. He established my go and he said, go that way. And I went that way. And he grabbed me and put me back on that rock and I ran that way. Got stuck in the miry clay again. And he pulled me up out of the miry clay again and set my feet upon a rock and said, child, go that way. And I went that way again. And he came back and he said, listen, I'm not ever going to stop. You can run all all your life and I'll never give up on you and he set me back up on a rock and he told me to go that way and it doesn't matter how many times I run away he's always going to be there you know why because he loves me and he loves you you cannot run away from the love of God you cannot I don't care how fast you think you are how far you think you can go you cannot run away from the love of God. You can run away from the will of God. And that's where life really begins to get nasty. But you'll never run away from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, the Bible tells us. So, let's just go to 1 Corinthians 13. That's where we're going to end after going through such eloquence and beauty in 1 John, but I guess we're going to skip all the eloquence and beauty and just move on to 1 John. 1 Corinthians 13. <clears throat> the word charity in 1 Corinthians 13 is agape. Agape is an unconditional love. And, and I just, I just want to say this. As a loving pastor, there's not a one of us here that knows what that means. Because in our carnal self, there's, no, there's really no way that we can be unconditional. We can get closer to it, having the mind of Christ. We can get awful closer. We can still love someone that is just downright hateful to us. We can still love them. But we can't love everyone if everyone's hateful to us. 
That's when we turn in on ourselves and we start convincing ourselves that we're worthless and all those things. The perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. And I know that we wouldn't necessarily categorize all that as fear. But the truth is so much of that <clears throat> inward attack is fear. Maybe not all of it, I get that, but a lot of it. So when, when the Bible says charity in 1 Corinthians 13, it, it's agape, it's unconditional love. It's that Jesus loved the person while they hammered the nails in his hand and his feet. The soldier that came with the spear and rammed it into his side, piercing his heart. Jesus loved that man. He knew his name. He knew his family's names. He knew his children's names. He knew his great, 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 great grandchildren's names who weren't even born yet. And he loved that man just like he loves you. Just like he loves every person you have ever met in your entire life and then all the other people you've never met. <laughs> he loves the people that hate him. He loves the people that killed Jesus. He loves them. <clears throat> His love is a righteous love, a holy love. does not mean he condones our actions. Do you get that? Yeah. Love does not always mean approval. Does that make sense? I understand all of the young people, maybe not here, but we live in a culture today where everyone under the age of about 26 says love means approval. If you don't approve my lifestyle, you hate me. No, I love you. I mean, honestly, that is a stupid statement. It is an ignorantly stupid statement. That would be, that would be me saying to Jesus, look, I'm a drug addict, and I, I want to be saved, but I don't want you to change me because you need to love me just the way I am. Jesus doesn't love any of us just the way we are. He loves us where we are, but not how we are. Do you get the difference? Because he has something far bigger, greater, more holy and righteous in mind. For all of us, for me, for you, for, for everyone we've never met. <clears throat> so, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. It doesn't matter how, well look at verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so I can remove mountains. Okay, you see that? There's a qualifier there. <clears throat> it doesn't matter how elegant, how articulate, how intelligent or persuasive you can speak. It doesn't matter how good of a teacher you might be, how good of a preacher you might be, how good of a singer you might be, or how good of a musician. If you have not love for Christ and love for the people that hear you, it will all fall flat. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. We might think, oh, you know, I, lo I love the brass instruments. I love, I, I love a good whole brass section. We, uh, I think it was maybe, I don't know if it was Lydia. It might have been Eileen. It could have been my wife. I don't remember. Someone... I went to a thing with, I think it was Lydia. We went to a tuba concert. There was four tubas <laughs> at Friends University. And it was actually really good. I've been there, done that, don't really need to go back. But you, you know what I'm saying? It was like, this is weird. And I think it was Lydia because she had to write a report on what it was like. Well, there's four tubas. <laughs> That's, what can it be like, right? That was pretty good. That's not what this is talking about. That'd be talking about like me playing the tuba. Amen. <clears throat> not, not Ben playing his baritone. That'd be like me playing his baritone. 
You say, well, I've never heard you play. Consider yourself blessed. Thank the Lord for his love for you that has spared you. I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't follow anyone real super close on Facebook. I don't read anyone's all posts. I just don't have time for that. Um, <clears throat> I have a good, dear friend I love dearly, Brother Jesse Craigle. He posts about 600 times a day, and I don't read them all. However, I did follow him when he was trying to play the saxophone. <laughs> There's about four or five videos that were on there, him trying to play the saxophone. He said he gave it up and gave it away because uh, it just wasn't working. And, uh, and his, where, where he, he lives with uh, Brother Ryman, Mrs. Ryman told me he wasn't allowed to practice it when she was there. <laughs> you can't be quiet with a saxophone. It's just not possible. <clears throat> so, so that's what it's talking about. It's talking about the terrible noises. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, look, all the faith in the world without love isn't going isn't to help you because it's misplaced faith. Real faith in Christ goes through His love. And it's because of His love. And then we learn to love Him as best we can. We're, we're not perfect at it. No one is. But we can get better and better at it. We can, you know, the Bible talks about uh, with marriage that we should, we should learn. We should, men should study their wives in, in a way to, you know, one guy put it this way. You should have a Ph.D. in your wife. You should study your wife and learn what ticks her off and what makes her tick. And don't do the first ones. Oh, my soul. <laughs> Ladies, I'm sorry. I tried to help. <laughs> That's not the message this morning. We got to move on. I'll pray for you. <laughs> We're supposed to learn. Well, yeah, but preacher, you don't understand my wife. Well, no, but God does. And God said you needed her. Because you're a moron and you need someone to help you study. And you're going to study her and figure her out. And then your prayers will be even more powerfully answered and heard and whatever else. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burned. So <clears throat> there's probably no one in the country that gives more to charity than Bill Gates. I'm just being honest. Through the Gates Foundation... Now, the word charity had to be redefined so that his population reduction plans could be part of charity. <laughs> but there's no individual who gives more to charity in this country than Bill Gates. Do you think that's going to get him to heaven? Now, he's never said that, but that other, I don't know, I don't know who it was. One of those very wealthy billionaires said that because of his goodness and giving to charity, he'll get to heaven. And he won't even have to stop at the gates. He'll just march right in. I can't remember who that was, so I'm not going to name any names. But someone said that. But here Paul says, Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, if I give everything I have to feed the poor and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Nothing. For time, we're not going to go through the rest of this stuff. Suffice it to say, God says, Jesus says, Paul says right here, everything you do in life, if it is not because of the love of God, it's going to fall short. It'll fall short of your expectations. It'll fall short of your hopes. I'm going to do this nice thing, and I hope that they are blessed by it. But if it's not born out of the love of God, it's not going to be met right. <clears throat> I'm going to give Tyler the rest of my water because I want him to think I'm a nice guy. <clears throat> really, Ben, I'm going to give Ben the... <laughs> <clears throat> Tyler might not be as bothered by some things, but I'll give this to Ben because I love Ben and I want him to think that I'm a good guy. So therefore, I'm going to give him my water. That is going to fall flat. Right? Now, if someone did that and gave me the water, and I, need, I would have no issues with that whatsoever. <clears throat> Your germs don't bother me. We're all made out of the same dirt. We're all as gross as the next person, so I don't really care. doesn't bug me at all. 
I played on enough sports teams where people were stuffed that they drank out of the same bottle that I had, and I had to make a choice. Do I die or drink this? I don't know. Let me think about it for just a minute. I did get a whistle. The coach gave me a whistle, said, Con, you're in charge, and it had stuff on it. I'm like, yeah, I ain't blowing that. <clears throat> but it didn't have water in it. <laughs> well, anyways. <clears throat> If I do this, if I do, if I do this, I just want Kylie to think I'm a giving person. I just want Kylie to think that. You gotta help me out for a second. I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah. So. Yeah, <clears throat> there was a girl in our church that, you know, she needed something, so I gave her 20 bucks. Yeah, that's how I roll. Yep. Hey, Robert, you're going back to Jersey. Um, I just want you to know, and maybe you can tell it, but the pastor of this church right here, there was a girl, I'm not going to tell you who, but, you know, she's like on the second row. She needed something, so I gave her 20 bucks. I hope she thinks I'm awesome, and I hope he thinks I'm awesome. I hope you tell people up there. Spread the, spread the word. Spread the word. That is going to fall flat. <clears throat> In fact, the Bible says something like this. They have their reward, yeah. right? And she may really be thankful because she really does need a chili cheese dog from Sonic <laughs> because the word need has been redefined. <laughs> Much like worship, right? Anyways, we're not going there either. <clears throat> But if I find out that Kylie has a need, don't drink that, but hold that for a second. I don't know how I got water all over everything. It's wet. Why is it wet? Well, don't say it like that. It's just water as far as you know. <clears throat> you doing all right, Kylie? It's good to see you. Good, good to see you, Kylie. Good to see you. Now let's sing. La, 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 la. And then we go about our day, and no one ever says a word to anybody. That's more born out of love of Christ. Because I'm not... You know, Jesus even says, look, if you come to give your offerings, your tithes, and you trumpet your own self, you're a moron. That's not exactly what the King James says, but it's close. <laughs> you have your reward. Look, I'm thankful for the rewards I have here. I'm thankful. Man, I, I love my family. I, my car started this morning, so hallelujah, I love my car. <laughs> I, 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 I love my shoes, hallelujah. I got shoes that, that fit. I got a, a new suit, hallelujah, that fits, amen. You, you know, there's two choices. You can either try to get fit into your old suits or you can little by little get new suits. I have chosen the latter because I tried the former for years. <clears throat> but I don't want people to know because it's not for you. It's for him. And he showed me that there's a need. I can't meet the whole need, but I can meet $20 of it. And then it just so happens that I have a need. I'm giving back. Thanks. I won't tell anybody. <clears throat> and now she's blessed <laughs> for not stealing. And for, no. <clears throat> if the things you do are born out of your love for Christ... And, and formulated because Christ's love for you, then the things that you do will have a purpose to love people toward righteousness. That'll be the end result. Yeah, it may be, helping, it may be taking someone out to eat. It may be getting someone some water. It may be helping them mow their lawn or helping them paint their house or, or whatever it is, but it's all born out of 
Christ's love for me, which makes me want to love you better. And to love you better means that I, like Jesus, try to meet some of your needs. I can't heal you. I can't force you to walk. I can't force you to get well. But I can mow your lawn, or I can paint your house, or I can do some of those things. Others of you can do different things. You can cook some meals. I could do, I, I could do the frozen ramen noodles. I'll get that to you any time you need. I can, I mean, I'm probably one of the best microwave burrito preparers that I know. Because, let me tell you a secret. <clears throat> you cook it, like it says to cook it, and then you cook it for like 20 seconds more. Dude, it's awesome. I can make you a really good pan fry steak, but if you ask me to make you some casserole or goulash, dude, I don't even know where to start. So there's a limit to what I can do, but there's a limit to what you can do, but there's no limit to what God can do through you. Love. Because God is love, and he loved us. That really does, by Christ, give us the ability to love others. <clears throat> then we work together to love each other toward righteousness. God is exalted, people are helped, lives are changed, souls are saved. Because of Christ's love. Would you let him. Pour his love into you. Would you. Receive his love. Here's one thing that I know. About a lot of people. <clears throat> it's hard for us to receive the love of God. Because we feel like. We're not worthy. Let me settle that for you right here and now. <clears throat> None of us is worthy. But you have no right to say no to Jesus. If he's trying to pour his love on you, then you do your best to receive it. And then what you'll find is that the work and the power of his love will go through you and it will affect the people around you in a mighty way. And they'll glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word and for these folks, for every family that's represented here today. And Lord, we live in a time that's just crazy. There's so much hate, so much division. And God, I know that it's your desire that none should perish. So God, help us to walk in your love better. That your love can work through us better to impact those around us that don't know you. And those that do know you, but they've drifted far away. That Lord, maybe you can use us to love them back toward righteousness. God, help us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? <clears throat> God sure does love you. You don't have to worry about anyone around you right now. Just understand that God loves you you and his love isn't a passive love those that's a fine love nothing wrong with it but his love is not passive his love is very active and his love is very deliberate and his love is very effective and it'll do work in your life and he'll be able to do work through your life if you let him do that today it's a great year 2024 just to say I'm done playing games I'm ready to stop fighting God's love for me and embrace it and then let God use it to his glory in reaching others
invite you to take your hymnal, turn to song number 505. Sing along there. If God's spoken, would you spend a moment with him? Song number 505. on that third verse this morning if no one comes we'll close the invitation let's sing that third verse together We love you. We thank you for time together on this cold day. I pray, God, that you keep everyone safe and healthy and warm through this cold spell. I pray, God, that you would uh, be with those that will be traveling this week. I pray, God, you'd be with those that are uh, sick. Uh, Lord, just heal them. I pray for Brother Cardi, Lord, as he's healing there from heart surgery. And, uh, Lord, for... Lydia Woods, that, Lord, you'd just be with her there in the hospital as well. I pray that, God, you'd just uh, rise her up from that coma. Um, Lord, others, I know there's many folks that we know, many loved ones that we have that are sick or having struggles. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to let your love work through us, that, God, we might be an encouragement, <clears throat> might be a help, might see some folks saved, might see some lives strengthened or restored or encouraged or whatever, Lord. I just pray that you'd get us to a point where you can work through us in a mighty way. We love you. We thank you so much for letting us be here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, we have some wonderfully... You can be seated. That's a good... Yep, yep. <clears throat> um, 
with some marvelously intelligent looking young men. They're, they're lacking one thing, though, and that is a cheerful offering in this here plate. <clears throat> so we're going to receive a very cheerful offering. You give as the Lord gives you power to do so. Mrs. Bean will play. <laughs> Hefner, we pray for the offering. Amen. Well, do stick around. We're going to have uh, lunch right after this service is finished. So once we sing this last song, we'll head on out. I believe we are ready. I sent a text message. It never got back. But we'll see. Um, we'll just head on out, and there's some food out there, and they're not all out yet. Okay. Do we need tables set up? Okay, so if we could have some of the teenage boys head downstairs, grab three or four tables, and we'll set them up out there, and then maybe one or two in here if we need more. And then if you're really young, we'll just send you outside. You can eat outside. That way we don't make a mess. Um, but we'll go ahead and get that all ready, but do talk to Miss Bean, wish her luck, be praying for her, we'll be sending her off tonight with a hurrah, and thank you for everything that she's done here, Miss, will Miss Newman be able to make it? Okay. Hopefully nothing else freezes besides everything that's frozen already, um, but be sure to get around and talk to them, um, other than that, We'll go ahead and stand and be sent off in a verse of song. Um, after tonight's service, though, if we could have a few gentlemen, younger gentlemen that aren't afraid of the cold, um, help carry things out and pull cars up, that would be a huge blessing as well. Um, but that's all I know of, so we'll go ahead, we will pray for the food, and then we will head out. Dear Lord, we do thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us just to have some time set aside to just... Say thank you to Miss Bean and Miss Newman and all the work that they put in. Lord, I pray you just be with them as they head on to their to the next part in their life of helping plant another church. I pray that you would uh, give them strength and, and courage and the ability that they need. I pray that you would just bless the food that we're about to have. Give us nourishment from it. Lord, we pray this on your name. Amen. We'll go ahead and stand. Amen. So yeah, just after we finish, they're going to be setting up. So if you guys can... Either streamline your way to the restroom if you need to, or coming back this direction. But if you can kind of leave that space down there open, that'll help them be able to get chairs and tables up before uh, everyone just kind of crowds around there. So after that, we'll let our our uh, elders go first, and then we'll and and then those with kids. Yes, and no service tonight. No service tonight. Correct. Service is right afterwards here. So we'll move. Mrs. Bean. What song do you want to play this last go round? Okay. Song number 468, the last. Uh. Ask her what she wants to play this last time before she's done playing. She. she huh? Well, no, we're not ready. Um, I'm not. Uh, Mrs. Bean has asked before, and Mrs. Newman did the same thing to me, where they wanted to quit on me. And I told them no both times. <laughs> and 
Mrs. Newman a few times, but Mrs. Bean, just because of needing to take care of her mom, not because she hated doing it or anything like that, but so I guess the only way to do that is change churches, <laughs> and then that solves the problem, but yes, no, it's, yeah, if you, this week has been very tough, so remember Mrs. Bean, uh, and then in prayer, oh, the other one I forgot, please remember uh, the Porter family, so they're in South Carolina, uh, Audrey, it's um, Josh and Bethany's cousin, they lost their two-year-old um, Friday, and about three months ago, they had lost their newborn, and so they've lost two children in the last about four months, and so if you'll remember them, it's Audrey Porter is her last name, I can't remember, I don't know her husband's name, but uh, if you'll remember them in prayer, just can't figure out how that works, but um, keep them in prayer if you will. Song number 468 here. Uh, let's sing there on that second verse without him. 468 here this afternoon. <laughs> 